Hello everyone. So firstly, if it says Tuesday tips or something, then sorry about that. We've got a slight potential issue with the, uh, with the titling again today. It's all my fault, by the way. Uh, so anyway, you know what it is. It's me, Phil, here at Digital DJ Tips with another live show. We, the whole point of this is just to help you guys and girls with your DJing, to help you improve your DJing, help you become better DJs and better DJ producers. So for those of you that are unfamiliar with me and what this all is, we're Digital DJ Tips. We're the leading online DJ school. Also the people behind that book you saw in our opening shot, uh, the Rock the Dance Floor book, which is one of our, uh, one of our publications. You can get that on our uh, website for free. You can also buy it on Amazon and Kindle and audiobook and stuff as well. We're also the people behind all the DJ courses that you might know us for. And we're the people behind all the DJ training that normally looks more like this. So if you know, uh, if you know me kind of here talking about DJ gear and uh, doing all this stuff uh, from YouTube and so on, that's us as well. So we're Digital DJ Tips. That's what we do. Uh, but on a Thursday, we go live and we just chat DJing with you. And this is completely open format. So literally you can decide whether uh, we talk about gear, music, techniques, playing out, promoting yourself. You might want to talk about the gear we've got here, the Tractor uh, Control S3 we've got set up here, but you could talk about uh, Tractor in general, software in general. Uh, whatever you want to talk about, I'm here to help. We're here to talk about it for the next hour or so. So welcome. Uh, it is great to be here. Uh, and get your questions coming in, please. Now, as you are um, beginning to type your questions, and I can see lots of people on Twitch and Facebook and YouTube as well, uh, as you're beginning to type your questions and uh, ask me whatever you want help with in your DJing, uh, let's talk a little bit about what's going on in the DJing world right now. So we have got a lot going on, actually. So this is uh, the Digital DJ Tips website to start with. Now, we've got a brand new DJ course. It's actually launching next week. Uh, it is with DJ Angelo, and DJ Angelo is one of the best performance DJs in the world, uh, one of the most viral DJs in the world as well when it comes to routines and so on. Uh, so if you're into styles like hip hop and house and R&B, Latin pop, funk, rock, bass music, then this course is something that you're gonna wanna look at. If you're a mobile DJ, an event DJ, who wants to get the kind of skills that will make you stand out from everyone else playing different genres and BBM, BPMs. Again, this is a course you're going to want to look at. Uh, or if you just love DJ Angelo, and let's face it, to know Angelo is to love the guy, uh, then you can find out more about this course next week. So that's what's going on in uh, our little corner of the DJ world, but there's more stuff going on as well. We've got articles about it over on Digital DJ Tips. Uh, Beatport accepting Bitcoin. Uh, we've got a little explainer, vid explainer article here about crypto and NFT and all these things you're probably hearing a lot about and not knowing what they are maybe. So we've got an explainer there for that. Uh, Technics has announced a new turntable, the uh, 1200 Mark 7 Silver. Uh, so you've got our views, which I've got to, I've got to say are not particularly complimentary uh, on their new turntable here in this article. So you could head in there and have a look at that. And uh, I think that's probably it for what's going on in the DJ world at the moment. So you're kind of fully up to speed there on that. Um, and now it's really all about you. So your questions are what I'm here to help you with. So first, let's just say hello to a lot of our regulars because I do love you. Uh, I do love our regulars. Hi to Scott, to Mixmaster G, uh, to Philly Spamus, who says perfect timing. That's good to know. Hi to Peter and Charlie and DJ Zan, DJ Kamal Mehra, um, and to uh, Nobody Likes. Oh, I'm sure they do, Nobody Likes. He says, afternoon from Manchester, my home city. Hello. Hi, GM and Peter. Peter in Vancouver and David in Dublin. Uh, Alex in Scarborough by the sea. Uh, and to Robert and Ferry and Matt and Greg and Beatrice in Belgium. Uh, cool. All right then. So questions. Let's get going. The first question is from Lee, who says, do we need to talk about the new iPads announced yesterday and what that means for DJ software and digital DJing? So for those of you who don't know, Apple announced some uh, iPads with the M1 chip in them, which is, of course, the same chip that Apple has put into its latest Macs. So what this opens up is the question about whether we're going to get DJ software appearing on M1 enabled Macs uh, that will just work like Serato and so on. Um, and if so, what that means for DJing. You know, I have thought all along that iPad DJing would become more popular than it really is. It hasn't become massively popular. People still prefer to take their laptops. But if iPads become more acceptable as a kind of laptop replacement, and I actually use my iPad Pro, I've got the smaller one, as a laptop replacement. I have the keyboard case, uh, and I don't take my laptop with me when I'm leaving, leaving you know, home and going off to travel now, unless I've got a good reason to. I just take the iPad because I can use it like an iPad, fold the case around and just use it like an iPad, or I can turn it into a keyboard and do nearly everything I can do at home 
on that. So, you know, if they become more acceptable as laptop replacements, and it's very easy for DJ software companies to port their software to the M1 Mac and therefore to the M1 iPad, yes, Lee, I think we might see more uh, DJ software and more developments going on there. I mean, a lot of it's about the form factor and about whether you can make it usable in those circumstances. But of course, the new M1 chips mean it'll be easier to plug things into iPads as well. So it might be that the, the connectivity becomes better as well. Mixmaster G, I'm sure you'll have some thoughts on this, being probably the most technical person on our broadcast ever. Uh, so maybe you want to chip in. Uh, hello to Steve in the sunny UK. Uh, and hello to Paul and Papa D and Andre uh, and to Vic. Uh, who says, as always, hello fellow tipsters. I like tipsters. Uh, hello to Amar and Sean and Chris in Vienna. Uh, and uh, Technobeat, who says hi to the Digital DJ Tips family. Hope you're having a great day and night. We certainly are having a great day today. Uh, how have you been enjoying our content about DJ controllers, by the way? Over on Tuesday Tips, we did uh, microcontrollers, all the controllers that are tiny, like these little ones that we've got here. Uh, and then this week on Tuesday Tips, we did kind of slightly bigger controllers, you know, the DDJ400, the, uh, the SB3, and that kind of size of controller. Uh, what, have you been, uh, what have you been thinking about that? Have you been enjoying that content? Uh, we're actually turning both of those things into articles, which will be on the website this week and next week, uh, starting with the microcontrollers tomorrow. So look out for that. If you're looking to buy a tiny DJ controller or you're looking to buy an entry-level controller, there are articles coming up. Uh, but you can also catch the replays on YouTube of Tuesday Tips Live, where we talked about that. Uh, they're there now of the last two shows. Uh, so uh, James says, this is a great topic. What, the uh, iPad topic, James? Um, well, if anyone's got any more they want to chat about on that, uh, then do so. Uh, there's a great question here from Philly Swamus, who says, is there a controller that unlocks Virtual DJ Pro? So let's talk about Virtual DJ Pro, because most controllers come for a piece of software, right? So we've got currently set up here the Tractor Control S3. This comes, if you like, for Tractor. So when it comes, it's set up for Tractor, it works for Tractor, Tractor's in the box, that's what the controller is for. And the same with other controllers. So you'll have controllers for Serato and controllers for Rekordbox. Now, Virtual DJ is a bit different because it's a bit like a magpie. Virtual DJ doesn't have a controller range of its own. Uh, so Virtual DJ, the, the makers of Virtual DJ, make it so that their software works with all controllers. There's, I can't think of a controller that you can't plug into Virtual DJ and it won't just work. So the answer to that question, is there a controller that unlocks Virtual DJ Pro? Yes, all controllers, but you need to own the software. So that's the thing with Virtual DJ. You need to be renting the software or you need to own it. I don't think there are any controllers that you can just plug in and the software just works like it does with other software manufacturers because they don't have, they don't tend to have those close links with the manufacturers or be the manufacturer in order for that to be the way it works. But once you've bought Virtual DJ, you own it for life. I bought it in 20, 2005, 16 years ago, and every time they update it, mine just updates for free. So it's, uh, it's, it's worth it if it's software that you think you're going to want to use. Uh, hello to uh, Nobby Chops, love your name. Uh, what's the best way to record off a Denon SC5000 and an 1850 mixer? Right, this is going to be the same with any DJ mixer. If you want to record your DJ sets, you've basically got two ways. If the mixer you're using has got a USB cable, a USB socket on the back, that means it's got an audio interface built into it. And that means you can plug a USB cable from the back of the mixer into your laptop or into anything that will accept it, normally a laptop. And that means that you can record that sound card in the laptop. So you could use Audacity or any software that can record. So that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it, probably a more practical way of doing it when you're DJing, because if you're using a proper DJ mixer, if you like, you might not have a laptop in the DJ booth with you. Uh, you might have, for instance, if you're using the Denon gear that you just talked about, it's designed to work without a laptop. So then you need an, or you need an audio interface in order to plug into your phone, for instance, to record it. Now, it is probably possible to rig up a lead that goes straight from the back into your phone because it's got an audio interface built into it. But the easiest way, which works with all mixes, is just to buy a little portable DJ interface and a Evermix uh, Mixbox 4. Evermix Mixbox 4 is the one I would recommend. Cost you about $100, throw it in your DJ bag. It's got a little app that comes with it, but you can also use any app that records on your DJ software. Uh, plug it in uh, onto your phone, um, 
sorry, any app that records that you can put on your phone. Don't let me confuse you. So just get your phone, put the little Evermix app on it, and you plug in uh, from your DJ uh, mixer from a spare output, like the booth output or the record output or whatever. Uh, and uh, it's very easy to then record that set on your phone. There you go, you've got a recording of your set. Um, I love this next comment. I love it. From Naya, hello. The sun is bright, the music is beautiful, and life is good. Hello from Barbados. So look, everyone on this live broadcast now is jealous of you, Naya. So if that was your intention, well done. Uh, so hi to Jay, who's in the USA, in California, but it's nice weather there as well, isn't it, Jay? Um, Jermaine, here's a good question. Do you have any good tips on using slicer mode in Serato? So slicer mode is a way on DJ software or DJ controllers, is a way of getting on your pads a different part of a bar of music or of two bars of music on each of these buttons. So when you engage slicer mode, what happens is it locks, say, two bars of music or one bar, whatever it's set to, it locks that in a loop. And then that loop will have the first note on that button, the second note on that one, the third one on that one, the fourth one on that one, and then we go into the next bar, one, two, three, four notes. So if that's set to two bar mode, you've got eight beats and it'll flash. So as your loop goes through, you, you'll get a flash beat one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it'll keep playing the loop, flashing those buttons. But if you press another button, it will jump to that part of the area that it's looping and play that until you press another button and then it'll jump to that. And if you take your hand off, it'll just keep playing the loop. So basically you can chop up a loop uh, with Slicer. Now you can turn Slicer so that it moves through the track at the same time when you're chopping up a loop uh, or the, the current loop, but I think the easiest way to use it is to set it in Slicer loop mode. So that's what Slicer does. So the question is, uh, have you got any tips on how to use it? So my main tip is to slice up something that, that, that makes sense. It could be a massive riff. So you know the riff I always refer to, because everyone knows it, is the main riff from uh, I Can't Get No Sleep by Faithless, right? If you stick slicer mode on that and have that looping, then you can kind of play the melody in a different way by pressing the different slicer buttons and it keeps it all in time for you. Uh, you might also want to, you know, like the harder, faster, stronger um, Daft Punk uh, acapella, something like, something like that. Um, because then you've got something obvious on each of the buttons. Because if you try and use slicer mode on a, on a, a more indistinct kind of rhythmic part of a track, it doesn't really work quite so well. It's kind of like you get confused and it sounds a bit messy and so on. So that's my advice. Just get something really um, strong that you can loop uh, and, um, and uh, give it a go. Um, so, <coughs> excuse me. Jorge says, hi, Phil. Big hug from Portugal. Uh, night stills out by here. I'm not sure what you mean by that, Jorge, but anyway. Hello over there in Portugal. We love you. Not too far from you here. Um, so James has been enjoying our coverage of the best controllers under $300. I'm glad you enjoyed that. Um, Lord says, D Phil, um, did he already suggest his book? Uh, I'm sure you're saying that with your tongue in your cheek. Of course I did. I start every broadcast by uh, reminding people we have the book. Um, so um, Juan says, I still have a Mark II 1200. Yeah, yeah we were talking about the, um, the Technics 1200s, weren't we, a minute ago, and that they've just launched this Mark VII. Uh, I have got the Mark IIs as well, and I frankly think they're better than these Mark VII's. These Mark VII's are very lightweight, so therefore in a bassy environment like a club with a lot of vibrations going on, uh, they don't perform very well. Uh, so I'm not, uh, I'm not a fan of the new uh, Technics at all. Uh, so Mike says, uh, I would love to hear a session on the ins and outs of starting up a music podcast. That's a great question. Uh, it's something that we certainly uh, haven't got time to talk about now, but thank you very much for that, Miles. Um, I will certainly uh, stick that on our list, see what we can do for you. What is the cheapest Serato DVS enabled controller? I have an NV2, says Earl. So. For those of you that don't understand DBS, DBS is the best way of explaining it is to talk about where it came from. So basically, you can buy vinyl like this. This is for record box, but it comes for all DJ systems. Now this vinyl doesn't have music recorded on it. It has computer code. And the way DBS works is you, you put that vinyl onto your existing turntables and then you plug in a special DBS interface. So I've got one here. This is a DBS interface for Denon's uh, 
uh, it's a Denon DVS interface, it's called the DS1. Uh, and this little Denon interface uh, plugs between your turntables, so your turntables will plug into it, turntable one, turntable two, and then out of it, you plug another lead going to where you would normally plug your turntables into your mixer. So it sits between, it kind of hijacks the audio signal between the turntables and your mixer. Now remember, those pieces of vinyl are not playing music, they're playing computer code. So what's going into this box is computer code. And here's the magic thing, it's got a USB socket on it. This goes off to your laptop. So the laptop basically listens to the computer code that's being played from the, from the uh, record decks and it it hijacks it, it listens to it and says what's going on from those records and so when you're moving the records backwards and forwards the computer knows you're doing that and it moves the DJ software backwards and forwards on the tracks that you've got loaded and you can even set it so that as you move the needle through the record it moves through the mp3 that you're playing as well and then your computer sends audio back to this box which then goes into your mixer. So it's a, it is a way of controlling DJ software from existing gear, existing DJ controllers, existing mixes. It's a really cool way of doing it. It was in fact the first way that DJ software was controlled by equipment way back when. I remember seeing Richie Horton do it in Sankey Soap in Manchester in about 2004. Uh, and it all went wrong, always did back in those days. Uh, but it was enough to make us all think, wow, this is definitely the future. So that's DVS. It's still around now. Uh, and the reason it's still around is that it will work with any gear. So if you've got one of those boxes and a couple of those pieces of vinyl or a couple of you can get control CDs as well, tucked in your record box or in, tucked in your record bag or your DJ bag, when you turn up at a venue to play with Serato, even if their gear is pretty rubbish, you can quickly get it all working. So what um, Earl is asking here is, what is the cheapest enabled controller that you can do this with? Well, let me just backtrack a bit. Most DJ mixers nowadays actually have an audio interface built into them, like I was saying to you earlier when we were talking about recording your DJ sets. That means that you can usually use those DJ mixers directly without needing that DVS box and you just plug your computer into the audio interface socket on the back of the mixer and Serato will work as long as you've got a little expansion pack for Serato which is just a piece of software you buy called the club kit. As long as you've got the club kit on your computer that should work with Pioneer mixers, Denon mixers, Allen and Heath mixers and so on. Any that's got the audio interface on the back. It has to have an audio interface. So actually I'm not sure the Zone 96 will have it because it's an analog mixer. So yeah, but definitely uh, Denon and uh, Pioneer mixers to give you two examples. So it's the same with controllers. It doesn't, there's no DVS enabling going on inside a controller, uh, not normally anyway. So as long as the controller has got two things, uh, well, only one thing, because the controller will always have an audio interface built into it. Uh, so you'll always have a way of plugging it into your computer. So that bit's sorted. But what you need is two inputs for turntables. So any DJ controller that has got two inputs for turntables should work fine with Serato DVS, as long as it's a Serato controller in the first place. So that's all you've got to check. The cheapest one offhand, not sure to be honest. I can't think of a mid-range Serato controller uh, cheaper than the Pioneer DJ DDJ SX3 or the DDJ 1000 SRT, which are both around $1,000. Uh, if anyone can think of a currently manufactured one, I can think of old ones, but I'm thinking of current easy to get ones, uh, do let us know and we'll pass that on to Earl. So I hope that uh, was helpful to you, Earl. Uh, I love it, I love it when we can talk about tech and introduce people to new tech who uh, maybe don't, don't, haven't seen it before and, and, and aren't up to speed with it. So if you're one of those people, if I've just helped you understand DVS, uh, please can you do me a favor? I'm just gonna focus my camera on my face a bit more if I can. Is that better? I need to get autofocus on this camera. The trouble is it does all that moving in and out stuff and I don't like that either. So uh, maybe I'll just, set the, uh, I'll just set the aperture a bit narrower. Anyway, I'm kind of thinking out loud here. Um, uh, yeah, if you're enjoying this, please do hit the like button. But even better, please hit the share button because that helps us to get this far and wide. And I want to say a special hello, hello to everyone now, wherever you're watching, on Mixcloud, on Facebook, especially our Twitch family, hello to you, uh, and on our YouTube page as well. Uh, so over on Mixcloud, hello to Jimmy J, who says, uh, what portable external hard drive would you recommend for Mac um, using Rekordbox? I'm looking for, say, three quarters of a terabyte rather than having a number of smaller plug-in USBs. I don't know, uh, and that's the absolute truth there. Most people will just use a USB for, uh, for that or even an SD card because you can get an awful lot on an SD card nowadays. 
but I, um, I don't know. Uh, so if anyone's got any recommendations for Jimmy about a nice um, external hard drive, I mean, you're definitely going to want to go for an SSD hard drive uh, that works with Rekordbox, uh, please do uh, let me know and I'll pass that on. It's not a question I've ever been asked. And most people, as I say, use a, a high capacity USB or, or SD for, for that kind of stuff. Uh, right. More questions, more questions, more questions. I'm glad to hear the weather's good everywhere uh, at the moment, most places. Hi to Simon in London, who's enjoying the good weather there. Uh, so uh, Philly's Famous is uh, it's actually pronounced Philly's Famous. Of course it is, Phil. Uh, obvious when you say it. Um, so um, DJ Virtual says, why you not talk about vinyl DJing? It's best of the best because vinyl DJing is like talking about taking photos with film in your camera. Yes, it's awesome, but 99% of people don't do it that way anymore. Uh, and we're called digital DJ tips for a reason. I love vinyl DJing. I've got my, some of my old vinyl up here from years gone by. Uh, I love vinyl DJing. I sometimes crack vinyl out and have a go, but it's not how it's done nowadays and it's not how we, uh, how we teach or talk about it as a rule. Uh, not that we've got anything against it. Uh, so if we're going to move from vinyl DJing to the future, uh, Anthony says, any thoughts on the future of DJing? Will stay at home change the game with all these online shows? I don't think that live streaming is going away. I think live streaming is now here to stay as a valid way of expressing yourself as a DJ. I also think that DJing has now become separated from clubbing, which is a really, really good thing. The art form of DJing is now becoming something that can be done on YouTube. It can be done on Twitch. It can be done um, on small parties where you've got portable gear and you're up in the fields with 10 people and a small speaker. Uh, it can be done anywhere now. Now obviously the nightclub is a wonderful place to experience DJing and I'm sure that as soon as DJing kind of comes back, nightclubs will come back with a vengeance, but I now think it's got a broader appeal. And I also think that, you know, um, this whole lockdown thing has brought a lot more people back into DJing who maybe kind of hung their headphones up because they weren't in a position to play in clubs anymore. Maybe they were getting a bit older, maybe they've got families, and now they're thinking, you know what, I've still got something to say. I still want to do this. I think it's actually, um, obviously it's been terrible for people who rely on an income from DJing, and you know, it's, I'm not going to under, uh, underrepresent how bad that's been for people who have got an income from DJing. Something like 70% of people who earned their income from DJing have had to retrain and do something different, clearly because there's no income anymore. But when we get past all that, when it all comes back, I think we're going to see DJing in a healthier place. I'm very um, optimistic about it and excited about it, Anthony. Really good question. Thank you for that one. Right. Uh, now let's move forward and uh, pull one or two more of your questions up here. Um, this is from Sean, who says, I hope you're well. I am. Thank you. Uh, I have a DDJ200, a basic controller. I know I can hook it up to get a proper loud system. Um, but should I get the 800 or the 900? I just like two channels. Um, so if you want to upgrade, go for the DDJ800 if you just want two channels. That'll give you a good, uh, a really good system. I thought you probably meant the 800 or the, or the 1000. Go for the DDJ800. It's a great, great controller. And uh, you don't need any more than that. You, you only want two channels. Hello to Marcus. Um, so... Um, Drew says, I'm trying to decide between the Denon DJ Prime 4 and the Pioneer XDJ XZ. Can you help me with some information that may be helpful? I love Denon and their new line, and I've had uh, Denon controllers in the past. Uh, I currently have a Pioneer DDJ 1000. Okay, very, very quickly, these are two controllers that don't need a computer to run, so they're not really controllers, they're standalone DJ systems. You're currently using Pioneer, so for that reason, you might want to stick with Pioneer because you understand and you know it all. But you've had Denon in the past. If you move to the Prime 4, I think it's a Prime 4 you talked about, wasn't it? Uh, yep. You're going to get a far more capable controller or DJ system than the XDJ XZ or XZ. It's got four, four real channels that you can use without using a laptop, whereas the XDJ XZ has only got two you need to plug in a laptop to use all four. It's got Wi-Fi and streaming on it. It's basically a, a much better device for your money. But it all depends on whether you want to stick with Pioneer or not, I say. If you are someone who uh, is happy to go with an outsider and Denon is still an outsider, uh, then go with the Denon unit. You'll have an awful lot of fun with it. But if you are someone who wants to go with an industry standard, I'd say even though the Pioneer technology is a bit behind, you can't really go wrong with that because it is the industry standard. Uh, 
So here's an answer from Mixmaster G. You know, we're talking about the M1 MacBooks and the M1 iPads. Most likely with the next versions of Mac OS and iOS apps at 100% M1 will run on both platforms. Uh, apps that use Rosetta will not be able to do this. So basically the most up-to-date code should work uh, and we might see DJ software coming on the iPad quite easily. Um, obviously what Apple is trying to do here is have the same code work across iPads and uh, Macs, which is uh, an end game that it's been working towards. It's all becoming clear for a long time now. Uh, so cool. Uh, let's wait and see what happens. Hello to Hope Streamer, love your name, over there in Texas. Um, XMR Films is making an extremely good point. Uh, don't repeat your comments, please, people. Um, Jonas says, great with the weekly inspiration from Digital DJ Tips. Thank you, Jonas. Uh, my question this week, what are your thoughts and advice re-silent discos? I think silent discos are great. So if anyone doesn't know what silent discos are, you get a bunch of headphones, everyone wears a pair, they're like, they've got radio on them, and the DJ uh, is playing in silence and it's being broadcast to everyone's headphones. And sometimes you can play games like having two DJs and the person with the headphones can switch between the two DJs, so it's kind of like a DJ battle going on. I think they're brilliant. Um, they're great fun. So yeah, I love them. Uh, so... Um, yeah, nothing more to say really. I think they're great. Um, so Keith is in sunny Alberta in Canada. Hello, Keith. I got asked to show and teach uh, how to make mixtapes to the youth in the area. What course would you recommend to take? Uh, so that's an easy, easy answer to you. Uh, the course I would recommend you take for making mixtapes is our mixtape course. Uh, you knew I was going to say that, didn't you? So head over to the Digital DJ Tips courses page, uh, scroll down, uh, and then in the introduction courses, uh, scroll past that and get to the uh, mixing courses, scroll past that, get to the software and hardware courses, scroll past that, and you get to the specialized courses. And there you will find Pro Mixtape Formula. It's actually just been updated recently. It's all new, uh, and this will teach you how to make mixtapes. And once you've taught yourself, you can teach the lucky people uh, in your area who you've been asked to teach. So Pro Mixtape Formula is the course for you if you want to learn to do mixtapes. Uh, the, the best thing about this is it teaches you to DJ your own mixtapes, but if you go wrong, it shows you how to not have to go back to the beginning every time when you go wrong and then fix it later. It's the way mixtapes are made by pro DJs and we teach you how to do it in that course. So uh, thank you for the question, Keith. Um, let's keep scrolling on and finding more questions here. Um, this is from uh, DJ Virtual who says, hi, I have 22 years DJing. I was starting on vinyls. Oh, this is you're talking over and over again about vinyl DJing. DJ Virtual, change the record, literally. We've already answered your question. Please stop typing the same thing in our comments. Um, would it be possible to live stream from an iPhone when using DJ or Ouija at the same time, says Rene. Uh, if you're running DJ software on your iPhone, I don't think you can live stream at the same time from the same iPhone. Uh, I definitely don't think it would be practical to do that, even if you could, Rene. Uh, Matthew says, in the past, I've used iTunes to create my playlists, but I've been scared to upgrade Recordbox since they updated their platform. Will my playlists transfer over to Recordbox? If you've got playlists in iTunes, they'll work just fine on the new version of Recordbox. Don't worry about that. Uh, apparently, it's Earth Day today. Thank you for that, Karen. Happy Earth Day, everyone. Uh, Jesson says, I'm kind of regretting buying the DDJ-1000. It's too big for me, and I rarely use four channels. Should I downgrade to the DDJ-800? Yep, uh, fine. Downgrade to that. You'll like it. It's smaller, and it's got everything that you need. Um, so Creature says, glad to see Tractor finally getting some love on here. We've been talking about this Tractor Control S3 controller here. We actually did a uh, live broadcast on Tuesday where we were talking through the best controllers under $500. And this one came second, the Control S3. It's actually a bit more than $500 in the USA, but you can get it for like £290 and €380 Euros in Europe at the moment which is great bargain, really, for the hardware you get. So yeah, we, we've got nothing against Tractor. We just wish they'd pull their finger out and upgrade their software a bit because they've dropped from about 30% of our audience as Tractor users to 12% in the last three or four years. And that's because they're not keeping up with Recordbox and Serato. So, Michael says, hi, Phil. I've been watching this show for months. Your knowledge is incredible. Thank you. I've been doing this for too long. That's why, Mikey. I'm very, very pleased to share it with you. you. As, long as, as long as people tune in, I will keep doing it. Do you know some open source DJ software, says Kingpin1905? 
Uh, software and hardware, well, you, open source hardware doesn't exist really, but open source software, I certainly do. Uh, and I will show it to you on the screen now. If you're interested in open source DJ software, simply head over to the internet and go to mix.org with three X's. Uh, this is DJ software that is open source and it works for Mac, Windows and Linux. So head over there and grab yourself a copy of Mix. It's really nice software. We don't cover it because our audience doesn't tend to use it, but that doesn't mean that it's not good software. Uh, it is, it's an awesome piece of software. Uh, so head over and have a look at Mix if you're interested in open source software. There you go, there's a little look at what it looks like. It's become extremely capable software over the years and it is cool. Uh, last time we looked at it, we really enjoyed having a look at it. As I say, you know, we tend to cover what our audience uses and most people don't use Mix, which is why we don't cover it. But uh, if that's something that is of interest to you, Kingpin, that's the one you should look at for sure. So uh, Technobeat says, I've updated the Twitch app and now live streaming is available. That's cool. Unfortunately, there's no internal audio out from the device itself. Uh, so I'm not sure what you mean by that, Technobeat. Why would you need an audio out um, from a Twitch app? Let me know. Uh, but I'm glad that you can now broadcast from the Twitch app. I'm assuming you mean on iOS, right? Um, so I'm glad about that because that was something that was lacking. Um, so Dimitri says, I play music with my laptop in Serato, but sometimes uh, it bugs a little and it's very slow. Do I need a RAM, up, RAM upgrade? At the moment I have eight gigabytes and I'm thinking of upgrading to 16. I would think eight would probably be enough, but upgrading to 16 wouldn't hurt. I try other things as well, you know, closing down everything else, um, uh, up, upping your latency a little bit, up, uh, upping the buffer uh, so that it, uh, you're not telling your system to work quite so hard. Uh, before you spend money on more RAM, but you can certainly uh, you can certainly have a go at that stuff. Um, the next question I have live is from uh, with people discussing the DDJ800 versus the DDJ1000 for record box. Um, uh, the the jog wheels are a lot smaller on the DDJ1000. Says DJ Paul Mac. Uh, I wanted full size jogs. Yeah, but I guess if Jason wanted a smaller controller. It's Jason's probably already thought about that and isn't bothered about the smaller jog wheels. Uh, maybe not, but thank you for your uh, input there. Steve says, is Tractor dead? No, Tractor's still, still up and running. Uh, Phil, do you expect DJs to have to get the vaccine to work again? Oh, wow, that's a political question, isn't it? It just depends where you are in the world, you know. Um, I don't have an answer to that. I, I think personally that uh, while I would encourage people to have the vaccine, I think forcing them to do it in order to be able to do certain things probably a little bit a uh, little bit too top heavy but I'm a bit of a liberal but uh, I don't know I don't know the answer to that uh, hope streamer says uh, rock the dance floor good good book on Amazon oh thank you very much I'm glad you uh, I'm glad you enjoy enjoy our rock the dance floor book so you all know that you can get our rock the dance floor book for free don't you uh, if you go to digital DJ tips you can subscribe to digital DJ tips uh, by just going to this link here Go to uh, digitaldjtips.com and we'll give you a download of our book for free. Uh, so if you want to grab the book, which is on Amazon, as, uh, uh, as is being said, uh, this is uh, the page for the book on Amazon. Uh, I'm very proud that we've got, uh, we've got nearly five star ratings from hundreds of people for the book. Uh, you can also get it as a audio book uh, and as a download. Um, for your Kindle and stuff. So uh, this, is, uh, this is the kind of best-selling book on Amazon nowadays about how to DJ. Uh, so if you are interested in getting a copy for yourself of our book, uh, go grab it from, uh, from Amazon. However, having said that, um, I want you to have it for free. So do go grab your copy from uh, here. You get it for joining Digital DJ Tips. And now, uh, just recently, we've actually put it on the website. So if you head over to the Digital DJ Tips website and click on the book at the top, uh, you'll find that you can read the whole book here on the website now. Uh, so uh, you can have it open while you're doing other things. Uh, it's got all of our, uh, all of the videos that the book references are actually in the text here as well now. So you can, uh, you can go and view them. So yeah, the whole book is now online as well. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much for that. I'm glad you're enjoying the book. Uh, so um, right, let's put up some more live questions. Uh, Atom Fox, I'm glad we're talking about Tractor. That's why we really dragged out the Tractor controller today because we knew that if we did, we'd get some Tractor questions and we, we thought we'd give Tractor some love today. Atom Fox says, if I'm not into DJ scratching, uh, is the Tractor Control SA a good controller? Well, to start with, they don't make it anymore. 
secondly, it's quite expensive for what it is, or you might get a cheaper one today because they don't make it anymore. Uh, but thirdly, I don't think so. I think you need jog wheels to DJ, and the Tractor Control S8 doesn't have jog wheels. Uh, so for those of you uh, that don't know the Tractor Control S8, it's basically when Tractor had this whole thing about you don't need jog wheels to DJ, uh, and they went down this path for a few years of uh, pushing like non-jog wheel DJing, uh, it was the kind of controller that they had at the forefront of all of that. Uh, but the trouble is, it turns out that DJs do actually quite like jog wheels for DJing with, uh, and they don't make it anymore, it didn't really catch on. Uh, and for that purpose, even if you're not scratching, I still think jog wheels are a good thing to have, personally. So my, my advice would be, no, don't go for the Tractor Control SA, unless you really know you don't want jog wheels, uh, you know that the way of DJing you wanna do uh, doesn't require that stuff. Um, in other words, you, you're quite sure that you want to specialize down a route that most DJs don't go down. Unless you know that stuff, I would say uh, don't get the Tractor Control S8. I think you're better off with a more rounded controller with jog wheels. It's, it's quite telling that the recent Tractor Controllers all have jog wheels, right? Uh, so that's my advice. Um, right, bit of a uh, thumbs up for the Rekordbox tip here from uh, Rene who says, I upgraded from Rekordbox 5 to Rekordbox 6. Uh, my playlists were migrated without a problem. Uh, we're talking about playlists in Rekordbox here, but your playlist in, in iTunes will always move across because your playlist in iTunes are in iTunes. So as long as the software you're upgrading to can still read iTunes, which Rekordbox 6 can, you'd have no problem with that. Right, DJ 2AM. I've just been looking here and I noticed that hip hop rain turntables and either a DJM S7, S9, S11 or a rain is so much cheaper than a Pioneer setup with two CDJs and a mixer. Uh, the club setup is like three or four K more. Well, basically the gear from uh, the non-Pioneer brands is cheaper uh, and you get the same amount or, not, or more for your money. It's just the way it is, DJ 2AM. Uh, so yes, what you've noticed is completely correct. James says, uh, hi Phil, how often do brands tend to upgrade uh, or replace hardware? I'm thinking about the DDJ 1000 and the DDJ 800 in particular. Uh, this, this not being on my face is really annoying me because I'm OCD on that. So let me just try a little bit harder to get me in a bit more focus there. Yeah, I'm happier with that. Uh, need to work on it. This is all a new studio, by the way. All this new stuff we've got in the studio, all these new camera angles I'm showing you and stuff, uh, like, like the close-up of the controller from there uh, and the close-up from there. Uh, I've just literally fitted an overhead rig, so I'll, I'll have another button to press here, which should be completely overhead, and the front view. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is all new. And this one here, this view here, is totally new. Look, if I wobble my desk, it all wobbles, you see that? Because I haven't got the right bracket yet. And if you look closely, you can still see the holes over my head from where this camera that I'm talking to you now used to be. Um, but we are, we're renovating the studio. Uh, we, got, we got like six, hang on, let's count. One, two, three, four, five. We've got five cameras now and we're gonna have six. So, uh, so um, yeah, we're just, uh, we're just making some long wished for improvements to the studio. So I do apologize for it being a bit wobbly, literally around the edges. Um, so, um, so right, back to James's question. Hi Phil, how often do brands tend to upgrade or replace hardware? I'm thinking about the Pioneer DJ, DDJ100 and 800 in particular. I don't think personally, it's only a personal view, I don't think they'll upgrade either of those controllers this year because I believe the next thing Pioneer DJ will do is release standalone controllers to rival the Denon DJ Prime 2, Prime 4, Prime Go, that kind of thing. Uh, so I think that's gonna come next. I'm not, I haven't got a crystal ball, I don't have any inside information. I think the Pioneer DJ, DDJ1000 and DDJ800 are pretty much an industry standard now, and they will be relevant even if they do replace them with something new, for many years to come. So I don't think, I think you're on safe ground buying those. Uh, they're both really great devices. So I wouldn't worry about that. Um, lovely to see a lot of you debating among yourselves over on Twitch, talking about DJs who can mix, who can't mix, how important mixing is, whether mixing's uh, what DJing's about. My view is that DJing is 80, if not 90, if not 95% about the tunes that you choose and the order you put them in. I think mixing comes way, way, way behind. But that said, if you can add the extra five or 10% on top of picking all the tunes right, then that, is, that makes you the finished article. And it is worth spending weeks, months, years getting 
that extra five or ten percent right if you can figure out how to mix anything into anything how to play smooth dj sets then you go from being a good dj to a great dj uh, so it's definitely worth working on but most djs can't do that and most djs who are really good can still select great music and people still go away having had a great night um, i think djs concentrate far too much on the mixing uh, and not on tune purchasing and tune discovery and tune familiarity and tune selection uh, and to their detriment and a lot of DJs won't play out because they think their mixing's bad but their music is so cool it's so brilliant they should have started playing out years ago because you get better at mixing on the job you know DJs who stand up tall and say I'm going to do this right pick the right tune to play next and then try and figure out how to mix it in and if they can't they slam it in uh, DJs who never move past that point pick the tune to play next that they think is going to be easiest to mix and that is a fatal error and if you always do that you never improve past good so get out there in public play the right tunes in the right order and figure the mixing out as you go along you'll learn a lot quicker in public doing that than you will behind closed doors uh, right uh, Somos says, what's the latest on surviving as a DJ during COVID? Has live streaming opened many sustainable options? No, no one's making any money off live streaming, apart from DJs who were already making money in the real world. Um, so uh, I think what we're looking at is uh, vaccinations. We're looking at, uh, you know, the usual hygiene measures when you're out DJing. And we're looking at hoping and crossing our fingers that we'll start to get some gigs soon. I know some people are, um, in, all, in all truth. Um, right, uh, let's keep looking, looking, looking. Uh, it's, it's, thank you everyone on Twitch discussing this. If you are on Twitch and you're chatting away about DJs and whether they should mix or not, uh, I salute you. It's awesome to see conversations going on. As we move towards the end of the hour every week here, I just see you guys and girls chatting to each other in the comments on all the platforms. And I think that's absolutely brilliant. Uh, so thank you, well, well, well done for doing that. We've got a lovely community here. Uh, right, um, let me pull a question up now that's not about Tractor or the DDJ 800 or 1000, which is what everyone's talking about. This is from Dr. Karen, who says, any future plans for digital DJ tips to set up their own platform like SoundCloud or Mixcloud for their students? No, uh, we'd love to, you know, we'd love to get our fingers in every pie, but I don't think so. I don't think that's something we've got on the, uh, unless anyone's got a really good idea as to why we should, in which case I'm all ears, let me know. You could change my mind on that one. You could change my mind on that one, Karen, but certainly no plans uh, about that now. Uh, Art says, I love the ear pads on your headphones. How can I get some for my Pioneer uh, HD 1000? So the ear pads on my headphones are these. Uh, and these are actually something that I got from Pioneer DJ when they sent us the headphones for review. And they're these things here. You can buy them for the Pioneer Q1 headphones. Uh, they're basically uh, replacement cables and replacement uh, ear cups for these headphones. As I say, these are the Pioneer Q1 headphones. And as you can see, I've kind of pimped them up in Digital DJ Tips colors with the blue uh, and the pink in order to match the colors of our book. Uh, so uh, I'm quite proud of those. Uh, so in answer to your question, uh, in order to, uh, to get them, you need to have the Pioneer DJ Q1 headphones because that's what these are for. Uh, so I don't think you can get them for the uh, headphones that, uh, that you've got the other Pioneer headphones yet. You might be able to check the Pioneer website, uh, but I don't think so. I think they're only for the Q1s, but they are really fun. I actually love the Q1 headphones. I think they're really good. They're good value uh, and they're, they're fun. You can do that stuff to them. I think they've got them in white as well. Um, so that's the answer to that one. Um, Marlon says, is Serato the best place to record my DJ mixes? If you are a Serato user or a Recordbox user or a virtual DJ user or a Tractor user, your DJ software has got a record button in it. And that is absolutely the best place to record your DJ mixes. Unless you're using streaming services, Beatport Link, SoundCloud Go Plus, BeatSource, Tidal, or you want to record what's going on on the microphone or you want to record other DJs plugged into your DJ controller as well. 
because in most cases they won't record when you hit record on your DJ software. So in those cases, you're best off using a solution like the ones I was talking to you about earlier, an Evermix box, some kind of audio interface plugged into the output of your DJ system that then plugs into your phone or an external hardware mixer or something like that in order to record what's going on on the DJ system. But other than that, then you are fine to use the record button in your software. Um, the Ruckus says, what about the DJ, DDJ-SR line? The only reason I don't recommend the DDJ-SR for record, for, you know, for like DVS and stuff, is I don't think they make it anymore. Don't think it's readily available anymore. Uh, I might be wrong. Uh, Mr. Dave C says, when are we gonna get a Meet the Presenters series? Uh, I wanna know how you went from living in Manchester to DJing in Privilege in Ibiza, the biggest club in the world. Actually, we did a podcast series called um, Tales from the Dance Floor uh, a little uh, while ago. Um, and I'm going to uh, show you this now on the screen. So you can Google Tales from the Dance Floor and you'll find this podcast series, uh, which is uh, there's a series of 40 podcasts I did uh, every week for uh, nearly a year, uh, a year or so ago. So actually, it's actually looking at it now. It was a lot of fun, this. Uh, we interviewed an awful lot of people on it, um, DJs and people in the industry and so on. But the very, look at that, I did. I interviewed Ian Golden from uh, DJ Tech Tools. Uh, I interview, in, interviewed a lot of uh, DJs uh, who I admire. There's uh, Morgan Page there. Uh, we did Layback Luke and all kinds of people. Uh, but the final episode of Tales from the Dance Floor was when Sean, who produced this series of podcasts for me, interviewed me as the final guest on my podcast when we ended the series. Uh, and he talked to me about that very thing, my journey from being a, you know, a, a a resident DJ at my little club in Manchester in England to actually playing the biggest club in the world, Privilege in Ibiza. Uh, so if you want to know about my journey, just Google Tales from the Dance Floor uh, and listen to the final episode of that podcast. And that is where you can hear all about my journey. Um, so thanks for asking the question, Mr. Dave C. Uh, we are nearly out of time here, people. I can't believe it. Oh, uh, advice for hard drives. Uh, Lacey says, Justin, I've actually got a Lacey here, the orange one. Uh, it's down there somewhere. Yeah, they're cool. Uh, the My Passport SSD uh, says uh, Robert. Um, and the Samsung T5 SSD, I actually love those little blue Samsung, Samsung uh, T5s uh, as well. I think they're great. Apparently Crucial does a very good one, says Darren as well. Uh, so uh, XMR Film says, I picked up the DDJ1000 because I wanted to stop myself from upgrading ever again. We were talking about how um, it's kind of an industry standard. So yeah, I see, I see you're thinking there, XMR, and I think you're very right. Uh, another vote for the Samsung uh, SSDs there from Jack. Uh, another vote for it from DJ Skolo, uh, Skojo69. So Samsung T5 SSD is, by popular opinion, the best one to buy for DJing. So there you go. Uh, right, last two or three questions of the day. I want to remind you that we have the new course coming out next week uh, from uh, DJ Angelo. So for those of you that weren't here at the beginning, uh, DJ Angelo's new course, Made with Digital DJ Tips, uh, which we've just announced on the website. is not available yet, but it's coming out next week. Uh, it's called DJ Angelo's Tricks and Transitions. Uh, and if you don't know who DJ Angelo is, where have you been, head over to Digital DJ Tips and just do yourself a favor and watch this video that we've linked here. Uh, and that will give you all you need to know about this awesome DJ. DJ Angelo plays hip hop, funk, uh, he plays soul, he plays R&B, he plays rock. He's a real open format type of DJ, but he plays it in the kind of style that you will want to do when you've watched this video. This video is him doing it on the tiny Reloop Buddy controller. Uh, and he also DJs on bigger controllers and DJs on DVS and decks and mixes and all kinds of stuff. He is one of the best technical DJs in the world and we've made a course with him and it comes out next week. So do yourself a favor, head over to Digital DJ Tips, have a look at that and do this, join. Because if you don't join, we can't tell you about the launch offer that we're gonna, we're gonna have on that course when it comes out. <coughs> oh, excuse me, I was drilling. Told you I've been setting things up here. I was drilling literally um, 10 minutes before we went live. I'll, I'll, I'll be come clean with you. That's why we went live a little bit late today because I was too busy on a, on a ladder putting up uh, scaffolding and, uh, and mounts for cameras and stuff. Uh, and the place got full of dust. 
uh, and I dusted down all the surface, but obviously ha half of it went down my throat because I'm, uh, I'm coughing quite a bit now. So, uh, uh, so cool. All right, so let's get our final question of the day then. I'm sorry to everyone whose questions I couldn't answer, uh, but I will let you know that my team will answer all your questions where they remain afterwards on YouTube and on uh, Facebook and so on. And my team will answer them all uh, afterwards. Uh, Laurie says, we want a tour of your new digs when you're done, Phil. It's a deal. When we're done, I will give you a tour. We've got rugs turning up. We've got uh, cable ties and stuff to tidy everything up. Uh, I've got artwork to go on the walls. I've got, I've got, um, I've got uh, uh, deadening, deadening tiles arriving. Uh, we moved into this studio five years ago. And I literally have done as little as possible to it since we did. Well, now I've decided to, because I know I'm going to be here for the next five years, I've decided to really make it more my home. Uh, so <laughs> that's what I'm doing. Uh, so uh, Mixmaster G says thank you. It's um, thank you, Mixmaster G. It's always good to have you on these broadcasts, helping out as my technical advisor. I do appreciate the help. Uh, my final question of the day. Oh look, Matt is loving DJ Angelo. So thank you for that, Matt. Uh, my final question of the day uh, is from, um, and there's a few people talking about. Uh, safety in venues. Uh, maybe it's a topic we can cover more soon. Michael says, why did you stop your Tales from the Dance Floor podcast? It's because they are hard work. You know, finding guests and recording podcasts was taking kind of half a day a week. I don't have a half a day a week, unfortunately, not forever. So we did it for nearly a year and then we took a break. We might well come back. Um, uh, we might well come back soon with another, another series of those podcasts. Uh, so I'm just looking for a good question to uh, end off with. Um, so, um, this is my final question. Thank you, Richard. What's a good program to level all the volume on a recording? What is a good program to level all the volume on a recording? So you've recorded a mix and the volume's going up and down a little bit and you want to level it. The program I would get is a program called Audacity. The reason I recommend Audacity is it is free and it is what we use and it is available for all platforms. This is Audacity. Head over to audacityteam.org and get this program. It's called a wave editor or an audio piece of audio software. And you load up your recording and you can see the waveform, just like you see the waveforms on your DJ software. And Audacity lets you apply effects to your DJ mix. So let's say you've mixed in a track and it gets too loud. You know, that first beat comes in and you can see on the waveform it gets too loud. You can hear in your headphones when you're listening back, it gets too loud. And all the way to the end of that track, when you mix it out, it's just too loud. Well, Audacity lets you zoom right in and you can see the very beat where that went too loud and you can put a marker. And then you can go to the end and put another marker. And then you can highlight the whole area like you highlight in a word processor. And then you can say, reduce volume by this amount and you can get the volume so that when you, and you can listen back to it and see if it worked, you can say that's now perfect. And you go through your whole mix, not only the volume, but the bass and the treble, and you can correct everything. You can also do more clever things than that, like applying compressors and limiters, which will give it a more full, louder feel that sounds better at low volumes or when you're listening in a car with lots of background noise and really give a professional sheen to the mix. Now, funnily enough, one of the things I was talking about, uh, to, about uh, talking to you about earlier was uh, our um, Pro Mix State Formula course. So let's just remind you about that. Head over to Digital DJ Tips, click DJ Courses, uh, scroll down uh, past all the early courses to the uh, specialized courses and click on Pro Mix State Formula to watch a video and find out more about this. But basically in this course, we teach you how to use Audacity like a professional. We teach you how to not only make your mixes all the same volume, but also edit your mixes to get rid of mistakes. So you never have to record your mixes again if you go wrong. Uh, and we show you how to then output them uh, and have a version of your mix that sounds as good as professional DJ mixes. So the short answer is get Audacity and experiment. Uh, the shortest way of getting good at it is to go and get the Pro Mix State Formula course where we'll just we'll show you how to do it. Uh, and the person who made that course, my colleague Steve Penuetto, he edited some of the biggest DJ mixes of all time for Ministry of Sound. So Trans Nation, The Clubber's Guide, The Annual. If you are of a certain age, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Steve was the person in the studio that made all those mixes sound good. When Pete Tong and David Morales and all the other big DJs had come in, done their thing and sodded off home, Steve sat there with the recording and made it sound great. 
So Steve teaches you in this course everything that he learned doing that. Uh, so head over and have a look for uh, Pro Mixtape Formula on the Digital DJ Tips courses page if you want to learn how to use Audacity to make your mixes sound great. By the way, Steve also teaches it in Ableton. So if you're an Ableton user, uh, you can find out how to do that there. Uh, right, we're done now, people. Thank you very much. Uh, a lot of you saying, I, apparently I am of a certain age. Uh, I love the Ministry of Sound stuff. Oh yes, they sold millions. Uh, those mixes back in the day. Uh, they really did. Uh, they were kind of the best-selling albums of their time. You ask people of a certain age, what's your favourite album of all time? And they say things like, The Annual, 2001 or whatever. And it's like, uh, dude. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, we are done here now. Thank you very much, everyone. A big thank you to everyone on Twitch. Thank you to everyone on YouTube and on Facebook. Uh, we weren't live on our Global DJ Network Facebook group today uh, for reasons I can't be bothered going into, but we will try and get that fixed. Uh, and also on Mixcloud as well. Our Mixcloud posse, hello to Russell and Jimmy and Tyrone and Stevie. Uh, I'm uh, grateful for you for joining us as well. Uh, look, I'm back on Tuesday next week uh, at the same time, 4 p.m. London, 11 11 a.m. Eastern. Uh, also Thursday next week with another Thursday Q&A. On Tuesday, uh, I've got Laidback Luke with me, uh, a very special guest in the, uh, on the, well, he won't be with me, he'll be on, on the other half of the screen. Uh, so if you've got questions for Laidback Luke, uh, tune in next Tuesday. Uh, and then I'm back on uh, a week on Sunday at this time, look at your watch now, uh, with my Balcony Beats Live, hanging out, playing music uh, from probably my balcony, 15 sto stories up here in Gibraltar where I live. Uh, this Sunday, I believe you have Ben, you do. We, you have our community manager, Ben, with his In My Shed live stream uh, at 5 p.m. London, uh, midday Eastern. Um, thank you. It's been a pleasure to bring this to you today, as it always is. Uh, I'd just like to say, get good, get out there if you can, make the moments uh, and stay DJing. Uh, I'll see you again very soon. Till next time, people. Bye-bye. <laughs>